I felt completely unplugged, disconnected from them, from, from Tammy and everybody else. Like I just did not matter. I was baggage. Um, I guess not, not too proud to mention, I was actually in tears feeling like I knew that there were at least six other people in front of me on Tammy's priority list. Hey everybody, and welcome back to the Wednesdays with Watson podcast. I hope that you have gained much from this month's drops. The first podcast episode that we dropped was with Jeff and Tammy, who are college buddies of mine, and we are addressing forgiving and fidelity, and then also forgiving unforgiveness in this story. And so I hope that you caught their episode. It was in two parts right before, so right there when you're in your app. If you want to go back and listen to their story before you listen to their individual interviews, you can do that. But either way, I hope that you have gained from this. So today is different for the Wednesdays with Watson podcast. It's uncharted territories. As when Jeff, Tammy, and I sat down a few weeks ago, we all kind of hit end on that meeting with tears in our eyes and kind of our heart beating a little bit fast because it was clear that we were standing on holy ground, that we were standing on an opportunity for healing, that uh, we were some they, they were able to say things to each other that they had not been able to say in full honesty. So I've asked them both back on the podcast. And so today we dropped an episode with just Tammy, and this is the episode with just Jeff. And we're going to talk about that episode. And you don't have to have listened to the episode before this, but I would encourage you to go back and listen to it. We broke it into two parts because it's pretty long. But this is February 2022. This is the month we talk about love. We think about love. I know in my own wedding, Jeff, I had 1 Corinthians 13 read, and I love, love, love that passage of scripture where uh, particularly the part where it says love doesn't keep a record of wrongs. And that sounds good in theory, and it certainly is true uh, because it's in the Bible, but it's very difficult to do. So we're going to talk about that a little bit today. So I'm just going to jump right in. So I sent you guys, uh, first of all, welcome to the podcast. I always forget that part. I'm really, really glad to have you here. Okay, so I sent you guys the episode that will air before the, these two, the first February 1st, as a matter of fact, it will have aired. Overall, after you hit end on that meeting that night, tell me what was going on inside of you. Um, you know, I, I, just to be bluntly honest, I, I kind of it, it kind of went the way I anticipated that it would be um, a recounting of my failures and uh, the effects of those failures, you know, just flat out sin, um, how those, you know, how that damaged my family, how it damaged my wife, um, how it corrupted, you know, about 15 years, you know, of marriage following that. Um, but it was one-sided, you know, we really only kind of addressed. That's that. correct. Yeah. And uh, yeah, it was one sided. You're absolutely right. And I want to talk about that today because you said a few things in in my mind that if somebody said to me would leave marks for a really long time. And so while, yeah, maybe I originally scheduled this interview to talk about Tammy forgiving you, there are two sides to every story, just like you said. And you said one thing that just haunted me, Jeff, and I said this to Tammy in the interview with her is that you had 16 years to see if you were good enough. And that broke my heart. And so for those who heard the episode, you understand what we mean by that. But essentially the the indiscretion happened. And then 15 years later, Tammy just blindsided Jeff with a divorce. And so it was a very one-sided conversation in some ways, but things like that thing that I just told you where you said, basically she said, you have seven, I think she said, you have 16 years to change my mind. And so that in and of itself had to be hurtful. And so what I want to talk about today is I want to just talk about a few things that will minister to your heart. And then I want to talk to men out there who are on the other side, who hurting people hurt, right? So Tammy did plenty to hurt you after the indiscretion, after the repentance, you thought you were fine for 15 or 16 years. You just, you, you just kept saying over and over in that interview, I just wanted to love her well. I just wanted to love her well. You also said, but she hadn't told me that she loved me in three years. 
And you also said that most of the things that she did as a wife, she did all of a sense of duty. And so I'm not a man, but um, I know pretty much that that's the worst thing that you could do to a man because a man needs to be respected and you weren't quite frankly. And so you had to navigate your own way to forgiveness. I want to ask you a few questions before we get into that part and how you're doing with that, because we do want to make sure that when listeners are listening, that they don't fall into the same trap. Right. And so you guys met in college, started having kids and one of the things that you mentioned to me and even looking across the Zoom meeting with you today, you're you're very successful in what you do. You knew that teaching wasn't going to pay the bills. And so you just went, you you went grinding. You went grinding, climbing all the ladders, all the things. Do you think that the necessity to support your family and the grind, do you think that in any way contributed to what ultimately ended up being the demise of your marriage? really hard to that's that's really hard for me to say because obviously it was it was all it was her decision she did so there's a bit of a there's a bit of a disconnect in what i see in the justification for the divorce and what probably were the actual reasons for right the divorce um yeah i yes i, I was unfaithful to her i was an adulterer and you know there's that but what do, you, what do you think the actual reasons were? I'm just curious. Well, from her own mouth, um, you know, she commented and, and she said it in the first in the first episode, the the fact that I had trouble, you know, making ends meet. Uh, I'm not it was not good managing money. We struggled uh, all of the years we spent in Pennsylvania. We spent about seven years in Pennsylvania. Was, that was a grind the entire time we were there for her to get her degree. Um, I, I made a lot of mistakes in that area. Um you know, the, so there was there was a, a number of things that were in her head. So when situations developed in, in 2018, she saw the opportunity. She wasn't going to leave me when she had six little kids. Mm-hmm. So she had, you know, she had reasons to, to stick around. I, you know, I don't, I don't want to be quite so gauche, but, to, you know, to hang to hang in there. All right. All right. Uh, she didn't have the, you know. As you mentioned last time, you got to have a master's degree in psychology before you can start doing anything. Right. Like anything. So yeah, we and we had had the conversation going to Pennsylvania for her to get her master's degree. We talked. We said it out loud. You know, the 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 hard part. This will give you the ability to you know take care of yourself. Uh, if mm-hmm. if I may if I mess up again, you'll have you know you'll be able to provide for yourself. So that was said out loud. So in in. The last uh, couple of years of of the marriage, I was working a lot um, in my role, partly because I really was passionate about what I was trying to accomplish. I felt like it was it was valid work, it was meaningful work, which every man wants uh, their work to mean something. So I really felt like we were building something meaningful where I was at, um, and. And then I, I made some decisions even in that. Uh, wasn't doing a whole lot of vacationing because in the summer, that's when technical people get their work done in education. And then, but then the whole school year, I've never been good at vacationing anyway. The, you know, sitting on a beach doing nothing just doesn't, doesn't resonate with me. So I failed in putting a lot of attention into work. Uh, I don't think I'm a workaholic. I don't think anybody knows me well would ever accuse me of being a workaholic, but I did. I, I put a lot of energy into it. Yeah. I was just curious if it played a role because it's so often say that Satan's playground when, especially in young couples, you know, when you're, when you're trying to do the grind, I'd like to know how it felt for you. Well, let me ask you this first. So you had to have felt like Tammy mentions on the episode that, that you guys did together, that she felt very alone. How was your relationship with the kids during that 15 year or 16 year audition period or whatever we want to call it, um, which had to be very hurtful and something that you needed to forgive. And we're going to talk about that in just a second, but do you feel like she ostracized you from the kids or. Okay, good. So it was a fully functional home. I mean, anybody who came in and sat with us and spent time with us would not have, would have been stunned by the feelings that were sitting under the surface. Um, uh, we had, had, you know, we had a good relationship. I mean, we took our kids to, you know, football and baseball and 
school. And you were friends probably like you are now still. Yeah, great. You know, I, I had a great relationship with my kids. There wasn't any real dysfunction in, uh, in those connections. Okay. Gotcha. One of the things that, like you said, that interview was very one-sided. And so I want to talk about a few of the things that when you said it, I felt like my heart was going to stop. <laughs> One of the things that she said to you is, I'm tired of looking at the back of your head. Mm-hmm. Talk to me about what that does to you in this moment. Yeah. And talk to me about forgiving dingers like that. Because anybody that knows Tammy, she's witty. Oh, yeah. And, yeah. and, and I imagine that wit match with hurt and pain is... Yeah. Yeah. is but in, in, retrospect, in retrospect, she was right. I accept that I was at that point in time, and that was like late, that was early 2000, like 2000, 2001, 2002 in that period. And I was already, uh, I was already, already in my affair. I was already kind of unplugging uh, from her a little bit. And I felt, and as we talked about in the first episode, I was feeling very like, like thing, you know, things weren't going the way I wanted. I didn't feel like I mattered. I didn't feel like that my life was meaningful to anybody. Mm. Um, she, she loved her children. They were the absolute priority. I was further down the list, as I mentioned in, in that. And I, my work didn't feel like it mattered and my relationship with her didn't feel like it mattered. So I was struggling checked to find out. something. Yeah, probably checked out in, in some ways, right? I was, I was struggling to find something. And I was wrong. I was dead wrong in that I poured myself into computer games uh, kind of got lost myself in some of that, uh, chasing after a compliment. You know, it, boys today, people com- complain about boys playing video games. Large part, they're just trying to find something meaningful, trying to accomplish. Something. There's so little that they can feel like I'm accomplishing something. So the, the video games provide a very easy outlet for that. So I, I was in that place in my in my 20s. But still, you know, it doesn't make it right what she said. And that was one of many things even her saying, you've got 17 years to prove me wrong, you know, as a business person who has managed people, well, all of my professional career, you wouldn't manage an employee like that, right? Like you wouldn't say you have, you know, three days to figure this out. There's, there's a, there's a plan, right? So you sit down and you go, this is how you can change my mind. You didn't get that. Yeah. And, and I don't know if how much we, we mentioned it uh, on the on the first call that, when she, I was just, I still had a vivid memory of the night she asked for the divorce and um, she sat down on the bed and she looked at me and she just said it. I think, I think I want a divorce. And it blasted me. It was literally the last thing I thought would come out of her mouth at that point. I thought, I thought we were trending up. I thought the trajectory was really good. Gotten significant raise the summer before and, I, and we were, you know, the kids were starting to leave. It was going to be the two of us. And we were going to have, you know, the resources and the opportunity to, you know, to make the life we had always hoped. Cause we, you know, we started having kids the same year we got married. So we never had a chance just to be the two of us. So I was looking forward to that. We were heading that direction. Um, it, it just, the, the, occasionally it would pop up that kind of ticking clock. And, and I would tell myself and I would tell, you know, people close to me, you know, sometimes I feel like, as soon as Eric leaves, we are so done. But you can do two things with that. You can be, you can just kind of like throw up your hands, like there's nothing I can do to save this, or you can say, I'm gonna, I'm gonna double down. I'm gonna make, I'm gonna do whatever I can. Which did you and do? I, I really, I was, I committed to making her life better with me in it. That's kind of what that was. What was in my head. Um, I want her to 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 think about. You know, leaving Jeff or staying with Jeff, that staying with Jeff, my life is better. And, and that, that's probably a shallow uh, way to look at it. I, it wasn't like, you know, Jesus, please rescue this and, and help us fix this and let's build something real for you. It was just, hey, I want to stay with her. I'm going to do what I can to kind of bribe her with my love. Yeah. And, and you desperately, I was just getting ready to say that you desperately wanted to matter because we all do. And anybody that knows me and knows those podcasts, that's a, the you matter. It, it just, I say it to people at the hospital. I say it to, to you now. And so you, you were kind of set up for failure in that you made a mistake. She forgave you. And I'm air quoting when I say that, because she later said, I don't think I really forgave him until after I actually divorced him. Like now 
I've forgiven him. And so the 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 cantankerous stuff that can come out, the Bible says, out know, the heart, the mouth speaks. And so I would imagine there's lots of dingers along the way. You had mentioned the dutiful things that she would do as your wife. And and so I want for a second you to visit that place in your mind because you keep going back and saying it's my fault, it's my fault, it's my fault. And there's no doubt you made a mistake. But the pain that came as a result of that from her is not on you. That does not belong to you. And so I want you to visit it for a second because there's lots of, actually, there's probably not lots of men out there that are trying as hard as you are to restore their marriage, but for people out there that just desperately want to matter. I, you know, I know when I make a mistake for somebody, I'll do anything I can do to get them to forgive me and to give me grace and give me mercy and give me all the things. I want you to visit that place for a second and tell us how you are finding your way and how you found your way to forgiving her without saying, but I deserved it. Like I asked for this. Have you, have you done that? It's, it's been really recent, honestly. Um, I lived for, I don't know how long it's been, almost, almost 20 years. It was, March of 03, when when the affair was uncovered. So we're almost at 20 years here. And it's re- honestly, it's been only months since I have really started to look at um, this. Uh, you know, I did my part. I have I have fault, but I don't have to live with that. I don't have to f- continue to feel that guilt. Um, I have it. And and. For the last four years since the divorce, I have been. Um, I, I wanted to shed the guilt. I want if if we could get back together again, if we could rebuild this, if we could do this right, if we could say the things that need to be said, then that guilt would roll off. Um, and and it, it, that didn't happen. And and you know I don't think it would ever would have ha- happened until I started pouring myself into Jesus Christ. He, He's the one who, in the last few months, has really helped me see that the guilt was gone. The guilt, guilt's long gone. I need to stop living in the guilt, stop acting. And, and that's the big deal is stop making my choices based on the guilt. That and, I need based to make- on, and based on your thought that you don't matter. Yeah. Right? Because you made yeah. a mistake. Yeah. And, and the... People closest to me, seeing how things have played out, saying things aren't things aren't right. This isn't right. What what you're accepting is not right. And for me, to, for up until fairly recently, my mind has been, yeah, but I did this and I did that, and, and it was all my fault, and I was the failure. Um, and honestly, I, mean, I don't want to speak ill of Tammy, but I, I felt for the most part she was she was okay with me continuing to feel that guilt. And, and certain times uh, before the divorce, one, it seemed like she wanted me to feel that guilt. Um, and then, but in the last few months, seeing just because you made a mistake does not mean, and this is probably part of the definition of forgiveness, that just because you made you failed and you made a mistake does not mean you have to continue to live that out. It doesn't have to be an integral part of your life. It doesn't mean that your decisions and what you accept is a result of your guilt. That's right. And and I don't know you're you're a faithful podcast listener, so you've heard me say this before that shame says I made a mistake, not that I am the mistake. And so on your forgiveness journey internally, I I just want to encourage you as you forgive to forgive from a place of this person hurt me and period, put a period at the end of that. Not I deserved it. This person hurt me and it is my responsibility based on our core verse of, of Ephesians 4.32 to, to forgive one another. You have to find your way to forgiveness, but you first have to acknowledge as you just did that I am, you know, I can't keep paying for something that I did in 2003 even though there's far reaching consequences to that behavior. And in this case, as we mentioned, another child 
which probably complicated things, but, but I just want to encourage you. And I've got a little treat for you here at the end and something that I asked Tammy to do too, because this is really uncharted territory for, for this podcast, because if this podcast lands you guys in one of two places, I really will feel like that the Lord it has has used it to do to accomplish something that I never saw coming. I just wanted to talk to two people who had been through something difficult and full disclosure. Yeah. I wanted Tammy's part of the story, but in that interview, when I heard you say some of the things that you said and you just continued to say over and over, and it reminds me of me. And uh, there's, there's been a lot of crap coming out about the Enneagram. And so I'm not going there, but I do use the Enneagram from, from a gospel centered approach. And so I'm a type two need, need to be wanted need to be loved, want to be wanted, want to be loved. That's my core fear. And so in your situation, I would have just been devastated because it's like, am I ever going to stop paying for this mistake that I made for you? And so I do hope that in your heart that you are forgiving the offense because it was an offense, not because you deserved the offense, right? And so that's kind of free. Here's a big question that I want to ask you. Have you forgiven yourself? I, I've gotten to that place now. Um, so in, in you know, uh, it, it's taken the the adversities of the last four years, uh, kind of the emotional pain, uh, for Jesus to get my full attention, to kind of take me by my face and say, "Let me explain something to you." Um, and, and even here's an interesting thing I've I've found over the last couple of years is that the closer you get to Jesus Christ, the more gravity your individual sins have you know as you have a deeper walk with him the what people on the outside would say well that was no big deal you're like no 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 that interrupted the relationship this morning when i wake up because of what i did yesterday i feel the i, I feel contrite I, I feel humbled before him and and it, it affects how i talk to him this morning and i don't like it um and so in in what what are relatively minor, I, I don't know if you could compare them, but it relatively minor sins in relation, I've sensed him saying, you're forgiven. Stop asking me for forgiveness about that. You asked for forgiveness, you repented, you turned, you're forgiven. Let's move on and have a day together. Yeah. Uh, and I, so I, that I, has taught me that that other stuff that is long gone. That is, that is just, he's not, he's not holding it against me. He's not making his decisions on how to interact with me because of that long gone sin. It's, it's forgiven. It's gone. Consequences, you know, will still linger that, you know, consequences always linger, but the relationship is still, you know, is good. And, and the guilt and the shame are no longer affecting my relationship with him. So. Okay, good. And, and my guess is as she navigates through some things that she's navigating through, I got off the interview with her just an hour or so ago and there were tears again. And you'll hear the episode, but one of the questions I asked her was like, how good did he have to be? Like, what did he have to do? And at what level did he have to do it? And she answers that question. But then later, when I asked her another question, she she cried almost during the entire interview. And later when I asked her, because one of the things that really struck me in the interview that we did with the three of you guys is I said, Tammy, do you still love Jeff? And it wasn't, yes, it wasn't an emphatic, it wasn't, it was sure, you know, and I, and, and, and I kind of mentioned that to her and I was like, I can imagine how much that hurt him in that moment. Yeah, in my chest, that was. Oh, I can't even imagine. And I was like, I, and I almost cut it from the interview, but I, I think it's important as a follow-up because I do ask her that. And I am convinced that she loves you. I am also convinced that she is just so terrified of being hurt again and she's got to figure out and she knows this. she's got to figure out her way forward with that and so I asked something of her and I'm going to ask the same of you and what that was is both of you said at the end of that interview you mentioned it in kind of a cool little analogy you know acknowledging Jesus in our days and our ways and when I asked her what do you have to say to people navigating this she said seek Jesus I very distinctly asked her, hey, are you doing that? And she replied, she answers and you'll get to hear that answer. But I asked her, she would do one thing for me. And I'm going to ask you to do the same thing for 30 days. So from today is February the 25th to March 25th. Would you have one single line prayer to the Lord? God, what do you want 
from this situation? Do you, do you want it restored or do I need to move on? Basically doing exactly what you said in that interview, clearing the board, putting the king of kings in his place and saying, I know what my heart wants. You're pursuing her. She sobbed when she told me, she said, this last weekend I moved and Jeff was one of the only, only ones that showed up for me. So when, what I see it as, a, as a helper, as I mentioned in Enneagram 2, and as your friend, what I see is some potential for restoration here and for reconciliation and for it to be better than it ever is before. And I knew that if I asked her to go before the Lord with that one single line, as, as with you, by the end of those 30 days, it's going to be a paragraph because he's going to speak back to both of you. And, and, and she needs to figure out whether or not she wants to put her heart back on the line and, and, and go there. Or if she just needs to say, you know what, I can't get there. And I need to set you Jeff free to know that I'm never going to get there. Now, will that decision be made in 30 days? I don't know. But she said, seek Jesus. You said, seek him in my days and ways. And it's almost like, you know, the love there thing that I'm asking you to do, uh, both of you, except for I'm asking you to go to the only one who can give you wisdom. James says, if any man lacks wisdom, let him ask of God. And if both of you are going down a track that is not going to ever come to fruition in terms of what you you want, it, you very clearly want reconciliation, I, I think she mostly... I think she all the way wants reconciliation, but she is a thousand percent afraid. And as her friend, you know, I'm going to keep pushing counseling on her because this pain that hurts her so bad and this fear of being hurt so bad can easily be taken care of in counseling. I know she's got a degree in psychology. I'm getting my doctorate. That doesn't make any of us experts on ourselves. Right. And so will you pray for 30 days, a deep prayer, not what you want. Not my will, Lord, but yours be done. What do you want in my relationship with Tammy? Do you want me to continue to pursue her? What should I do? And I'm really, and I told her, I'm putting it on my calendar. I'll check in with both of y'all in 30 days. And, and if appropriate, I'd love to have you back on the show because listeners now are going to be heavily invested in this. And I don't know, I don't know what's going to happen. But what I do know is if this podcast can be a medium for you guys to get to some sort of peace with each other, I mean, and, and I think you are at peace with each other, but just kind of peace with how the things went down and how you want to live the rest of your life instead of being in limbo or wondering what's going on or her being afraid all the time. And, and I, and, and, and I don't know this for sure, but I'm sure there's a lot of go, go here. And then she pulls away, go here, pulls away, goes here and pulls away. And as a trauma survivor and as somebody who's been hurt very deeply, that is behavior indicative of somebody that's afraid. And, but that's not your responsibility. She, if she has truly forgiven you, then um, she can't keep the record of the wrongdoing. Um, I believe she truly loves you. So therefore, by definition, she can't keep the record of the wrongdoing. Same thing with you. All of those dingers that came in. Um, that hurt you so badly, including that night on that interview where when I asked her, she loved you, she went, sure. Um, you know, we, we can't keep those records of wrongdoing. And so I wonder, I just wonder what if after 30 days of not keeping record of wrong, wrongdoing, going to the Lord, like he is the sovereign God that he is and, and say, what do you want? Because I want what you want. I have been pursuing what I want, which is my wife back, but what do you want? And as he speaks to you, adjusting behavior if necessary. Um, all I know is that all she says is, is that you continue to show up. And somewhere around here I have, oh, yeah, actually right here. They sent us this from the hospital. Um, I don't know if you can read it, but it, it says we show up. And I think that is the the best thing that you've done for her. And that has been the most indicative of your forgiving heart is that you would show up to help her move, that you would show up to help her do whatever. Uh, I don't know if you work on her motorcycle or, but, but all she keeps telling me is that you just keep showing up. She said it in that interview that night too. So all of that for this very short question, will you commit to 30 days of our own little version of love dare? Absolutely. I mean, it's, it'll be, it'll be continuation. Oh, and for sure. For sure. I've, I just want to know what happens in 30 days. 
So I, it's, I actually shared with Tammy, I've got a kind of a list that I wrote for myself. And you know, sometimes I'm not really habitual, but for this, I chose to write out a prayer sequence, a prayer package, I guess you could say. And, uh, you know, take my puppy for a walk where I'm, I'm talking to God about it. Sitting on the front porch, drinking my coffee. I'm talking to God about it. We work through, we talk through that package almost every time. And one of the uh, number two on that list is, what's next? Like, do you want us to continue this? Do you want me to continue to stay engaged, connected, chasing after her? Or do you have something else for us? And there's, I honestly, I can, I can testify with tremendous confidence over the last four years. I've prayed that uh, hundreds of times. And I can tell you, it's been almost spooky how in the midst of that prayer, dozens of times, he has answered, like she has sent me a text or somebody has contacted me or something has happened while I'm in the midst of that prayer uh, that clearly says, stay, stay in this space. I know it hurts. I know this is painful territory. Stay here for a, a little while longer. Um, and, and that's, so, and that, and again, so indicative of a forgiving heart, but I, here's a hard hitting question for you. What if God says no? I'm prepared for that. Um, and, and honestly, uh, the last 30 days have been uh, a, a uniquely difficult period of time, uh, revelations that are just deeply painful that, um, you know, I've been just pouring all the emotional energy I can possibly muster into her and then seeing it go out the door in another direction, um, has, has really rocked me. Uh, honestly, sitting here now, if, if we, if we were having this conversation a week ago, very different space. Um, but I will, uh, I will. Tell me where I, that's, can you tell me where that space is for the listeners? Uh, I'm, uh, so we, we shared a, a, a counselor, uh, one of her former professors for most of 2022. And he told her early in the fall, like September ish, um, maybe October that um, he was telling me stick with it, stay, stay the course. And he was telling her, you can't wait too much longer um, that you, you can't leave him on the hook right. uh, for forever. She spent, you know, 2021 was good. We, we were very close. We were, we actually got engaged. We were, we were connecting regularly there. There was obviously some baggage that had been dealt with. Um, so she backed away. We, we ended, you know, she ended the, the engagement and then she spent 2022 kind of exploring, um, in her words, what was out there. Uh, and I didn't know uh, what was going on in her head. I didn't know if she was looking for my replacement. I didn't know if she was looking for, um, all the stuff that I didn't have, you know, all the, all the missing pieces in me. I didn't really know where she was. At. I, I, I continued to, uh, I just kind of put, it, my heart on hold, like I would really like to have somebody close. I would like to have, you know, somebody to connect with. I would like to have, you know, somebody to wrap my arms around and, and it just wasn't, wasn't really available. Um, and, and so the, the, the pivot that that's happened in the last three weeks uh, where she's been dating another guy has been uh, just uh, like, that's Dunk my head into the into the cold into the ice water again, and like here, hold your hold your breath just a little bit longer. And I'm like, I, I don't know if I can do this anymore. Yeah. And I don't know if you want to put this in in the in the podcast, Amy. But right oh, now, I January 25th, I don't want to do this anymore. I will if and I've been praying, God, please make it clear to me what what direction um, you want me to go. Do you want me to stay engaged? Do you want me to keep chasing after her? Or am I wasting wasting my time? Is it am I just spinning my wheels? She and I were having conversations this morning about that very thing. She was very clear to me. I, I do appreciate she she gave me some clarity on really what what her what she's afraid of, what she's looking for, um, and and she was very honest with me. She was I don't know if you have the capacity. I don't know if you can show me these things. They you know they're a little bit nebulous. But I'm like I don't know how to prove to you, and she admitted that. And um, so uh, right now I'm in a space of. I don't want to wait anymore. <laughs> you know, no, no, I, no, that's fair. And I, and, and, and look I'm, that, yeah, you're done. I'm exhausted. Yeah. Um, pouring into her and not getting anything back 
has been exhausting and I'm almost, I'm almost empty. And it really, and pastor's message about the, the, the widow pouring out the oil this last week, all I have is that when I, when I tip the bottle over, there's still more oil coming out. I don't know where it's coming from. Obviously I do. I mean, I know where it's coming from. I just don't, I know it's not coming from me because I'm, I'm done. Right. But if Jesus Christ wants me to stay in the space, I'll, I'll keep chasing this. Well, you know what? It doesn't get any more honest than that. And so know that I am taking both of you before the throne room every day. I also want you to know, Jeff, that you do matter, that your pain matters, that. Um, That's the- something I struggled with. I, I don't know, maybe every other day I'm, I'm kind of at a, you know, there's nobody out there that really cares about me. Like I am not a particularly important person to any, if, if, if I, you know, if, if I passed on from this earth, if, you know, God took me away, work would replace me pretty quick. Um, you know, my kids would, you know, they keep doing their lives the way they're doing it. It certainly doesn't seem like it would affect Tammy a whole lot. There's just not a lot of, there's, I just don't feel like. No hope right now. I mean, some days there's a, you know, somebody will say something or, or a situation will pop up. You know, Sunday I had somebody who really helped just made me feel really validated. Um, Tuesday, somebody said something to me that just really made me feel validated, but it's, it's not every day and it's not all the time. Well, I'm going to do my best to remind you because that is what I, that's why I do this, right? I do this to remind people that they matter. And Jeff, listen, every day at the hospital, you know, I'm working in behavioral health and I look into eyes of people who have made choice after choice, after choice, after choice that put them where they are. Or sometimes it's just their mental illness, but mostly it's a combination of both. And I look at them in their eye and I actually pull my glasses up so they can look me in the eye. And I say to them, do you know how much you matter? And you think that I would ask them how to solve a quantum physics problem. Mm. And inevitably, every Mm. time, tears well up in their eyes and they go, no, I don't matter. And I say to them, do you know how dark this world would be without you? And Jeff, I say this to you. If you left this planet today, yes, we would notice. Yes, we would notice. And so what we don't want Satan to do is take the situation and make you have a dark time like these people that I see every day, like the young man that 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 um, was in, a, in, a, in the garage in his car with it on and called the suicide hotline who put him on hold by the way and but finally called 911 because he didn't want to die but he wanted to matter and you matter because you are an image bearer and we don't compare like you said you don't really compare sins but david mattered to god adulterer mm-hmm. paul mattered to god killed christians and we and we could go on and on and on but i want you to know that you matter you matter to me you matter to tammy you matter to your kids obviously you matter to god you matter to our church and you matter to these listeners who are going to be so invested in this and so i am going to be so covering you guys in prayer not only over the next 30 days but i do want i would love to see just because i of the pain that i see in both of your eyes some closure of some sort like either this is, and I'm not saying it needs to happen in 30 days. I'm just saying today you're done. That's fair enough. But, and, and it sounds like you've been praying this prayer, but we don't know what the Lord's going to do in her heart over the next 30 days, because somewhere under all that facade, she knows that she's still holding some of these things against you and can't get there from here. Um, I think she will get there because and we'll close with this after, and I'll give you the mic at the end, but the other other question I have for you, and the, one of the reasons why I know that you might be continue to fight, is she cried on the interview with the three of us, and she cried almost the entire interview today. And tears don't come without investment, like she cares, clearly. She loves you, clearly. And so I asked her for 30 days, would you commit? Because I said, you told people to seek Jesus. Are you doing that? She's like, eh, in theory. I said, okay, well, let's take the theory away and let's actually go before the throne for 30 days and ask this one question before God and see where we land. And so I am hopeful and I am going to be praying, 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 praying on my knees. You guys are on my war room wall. 
uh, somewhere along the way, I figured out the prayer works, and that's all I got. That's all I got right now. But it breaks my heart to think that you're sitting in your house today thinking, hey, if I left this planet, nobody would notice. Not true. And all over the world right now, when this episode is being aired, people have it in their earbuds and they're hearing and one day when you stand before God, you may hear, hey, remember that time you spent two, you know, an evening and an afternoon with Amy? Somebody in Africa got some hope because they understood Jeff's pain. Somebody in New York understood because they realized that while Jeff made a mistake, Tammy still continued to hurt him deeply. And both of them had to find their way back to forgiveness. And so I love you as my friend. I love you as my brother in Christ. You matter so much. And if this marriage is restored, awesome. If not, we know that God still has great things for you. And we know, know that God still has great things for Tammy. But in this journey of forgiveness, it should come wisdom as to what's next. I guess I should say it that way. And so know that I'm praying for you. Know that you matter. Know that you are, are the things that I say all the time. I don't say those things just out of obligation. I, I see you right now. I know you, I hear you, I value you, and I love you, and I'm not the only person. And so in those dark moments where Satan wants you to be, feel alone, and that's what he does. That's his game. It's his game. And so as we close the podcast, I would give the microphone to you, and then we'll see where we go from here. I, I think our last thing you mentioned is it has been – a deep part of my prayer of the last couple of weeks, three, four weeks, I've really, it, it's been so clear to me, the, the spiritual battle the, that's just raging around us. Um, I, I mean, just, I'm, I'm brought to, in, in my prayer time, I'm, I'm praying and praying and praying, and then I'm brought to a point where I'm crying out to, you know, you know Yahweh, Jehovah Sabaoth, Send your forces down to help us, rescue us. Open our eyes like Elisha's servant to see that your forces are here. Yeah. That you're fighting for us. That um that you've that, and and part of it's encouraging. Saying it's not gonna attack what what's not, you know, a threat. Right. I love being a threat to what Satan's trying to accomplish. Um and God's not going to invest in, uh, you know, he, he's not going to clean up a house that he's not going to live in. Right. So those knowing that the, the, the adversity and the grinding and the tension and the, 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 the pain is it's, it's, I know it's part of something bigger. Mm -hmm. uh, it has to be. There's, I mean, I, I, I've got to believe that or, uh, you know, or, I, or, yeah, none of us have any hope if you don't believe that. Right. And, and the oft miss, misused verse but it is appropriate here romans eight twenty eight. we don't know the end of the story but we know that this is going to be worked together for for your good and for her good but to ignore that we have an enemy who wants to seek kill and destroy us is foolish and we would be remiss if we didn't remind listeners of that that we don't battle against flesh and blood jeff's battle is not against tammy tammy's battle is not against jeff or the indiscretions on both their parts the battle is against Satan, and he would like nothing more than to dismantle two people who love each other and love Jesus, who can continue to make a kingdom impact now that you really are empty nesters. And so I don't know what's going to happen, but I do know I, there's a song, and I can just think there's this one lyric. I don't know what the day brings, but I know who brings the day. And But I would love to see you guys come to a place of peace. And in doing that, I think both of you in this process of talking to me and thinking about it and praying about it, you, you're, you're figuring out, well, maybe I haven't forgiven that. Maybe that did hurt a little bit more. And in your case, you didn't deserve what you got back in return because that's not the way it works. We don't return, uh, you know, I think uh, Willie on the, on his episode said, you know, we spend our whole life trying to even the score. The problem is we don't know the score. And so, um, and so there's, I think both of you see a little bit of that going on, at least in, from, from Tammy's perspective, I think that she wants to hurt you as much as she's been hurt, not, not consciously, but I think that, that, you know, it was the, the hurt was so deep on her part that she wants you to feel it, but not. And so I think that 
asking her to go before the throne room, asking you to go before the throne room is going to bring some great clarity to it. So, well, thank you for being here guys. We, um, we don't know what's going to happen. And uh, this is uncharted territories for this podcast, but it is the desire of my heart to be part a solution. And if I'm in any way able to bring peace to this situation by my voice, either to my heavenly father or behind this microphone, I'm here for it. And so thank thank you for being here, Jeff, today. Thank you. Appreciate it. I mean, appreciate everything you do. Well, well, thank you for supporting the podcast. You are one of our supporters. And speaking of that, guys, if you want to support the podcast and our church just, Jeff, made that huge announcement with the community center, the expansion of Baylight Counseling. And so we are going to be investing deeply into that ministry for the community care center at Calvary Church in Clearwater, Florida, for people that can't afford counseling on their own. Everyone here knows that that's important to me. And so thank you for your support of the podcast. I would be remiss to not mention that. Well, we will be back in two weeks. It will be March and we will have a whole another month of a uh, of forgiving trauma makers. And that's still very much working itself out as I'm praying about it. And so with that being said, Jeff, I proclaim over you again, as a proclaimer for our listeners, as Bill uh, Phil's song plays us out of the podcast called "Mark by You," and you should you should Google it, Jeff, uh, or you you hear the part of it on the on the outro of every podcast. It just talks about being marked by marked by him, and so I know you, I know you well enough to know that with or without Tammy, that you desire to live a life marked by him, and so uh, we will be I will be praying for you, and trust me, on February 25th, I will be reaching out, and probably a lot of times in between there. All right, listeners, we'll be back in two weeks here in the Healing Zone. Thank you for listening. Let my life glorify you and teach me to walk.